Derek Jeter kind of sucks, so let's talk about it. Jeter, and who's going to get it? They drop it. Oh man, this is uh, this is an amnesia game for them. They want to forget they played this one. Okay, but in reality, he's actually amazing. I mean, the guy is a legendary player, Hall of Fame player. But the thing is, is he actually was not good at shortstop. Rather than me trying to convince you of this, you should go watch the Baseball Doesn't Exist Derek Jeter video because it is phenomenal. Derek Jeter won five Gold Gloves. He did not deserve any of them. He won the gold glove in 2004 while being the third worst shortstop in baseball, won it in 2005 and 2006 while being the second worst shortstop in baseball, and won it back to back in 2009, 2010. During those years, there were 11 shortstops who were better than him. The sad reality is that he wasn't a very good shortstop, but it gets worse. His glove is just as bad as he was at field. So I was searching through tons and tons of pictures trying to find how he broke his glove in, how he would wear it, and there's plenty of pictures out there. I mean, we're talking about Derek Jeter. Then I found the Holy Grail. This picture right here tells me everything that I need to know. Look, you can perfectly see that he curls in the thumb just a little bit. And then the big, big thing that I want to talk about. Right through here in the fingers, they twist off to the side just a little bit. All these little details kind of paint a picture and help me understand exactly how he used and treated his glove. We're also going to be taking some ground balls later because who knows, maybe I'll end up liking it once I actually use it. But probably not. But maybe. But probably not. But maybe, but probably not. <laughs> it's 11 and a half inches, it's black everywhere, and then you got these tan laces. I like the look of the glove, but I think the reason I like it is because I know it's the Derek Jeter glove. Ever since I got this glove, I just keep getting comments about how ugly it is, which is really sad. But for anybody who knows it's a Derek Jeter model, they really like it. The thing that doesn't help is that he's got this basket web. This is notorious for being either a pitcher's web or a Walmart glove web. And then on top of that, when you actually feel the glove yourself, it's not just black leather, it's like black oiled leather, which means it's actually really soft. It's soft enough to where before you actually break it in, you're able to squeeze it and play catch. It just doesn't have like a pocket yet. Derek Jeter wears his glove traditional, just like so with a finger out, and he always had the batting glove on, so obviously I had to do it. The big thing I wanna talk about is how ridiculously deep the pocket is on this glove. Without going to in the pinky, the ball is swallowed completely. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but as a middle infielder, you don't want your pocket to be too deep. So that actually gets me to my next point. Derek Jeter closes a glove with one hinge. The one hinge plus the really deep pocket is not a very good combo for middle infielders. Been a little too nice to y'all. Now I got a price for y'all. Snake guys were nice to y'all. Shoulders on ice for y'all. So having a one hinge glove is not a bad thing. But if you look at Rawlings, they have the Pro NP pattern, very shallow one hinge. Or another Rawlings glove like the TT2, which is a Troy Tula Whiskey model. It too is very shallow, but has that one hinge style. So if you are gonna go with a one hinge, it's much better for it to be shallow. It just gives a very open feel. Transfer feel great. I did a whole video on actually Mizuno that is built that way. Derek Jeter is a one hinge in a very deep pocket. There really is no advantage to it. It makes transfers just a little bit slower. It feels like I have to like reach into my glove to grab it and then pull it out. Like it feels really exaggerated compared to other gloves. So here's my biggest problem with the glove. It does feel good to pick the ball up, but it's really hard to tell if it's in there. Like if you dove for a ball, you don't sometimes, you literally don't know if you're holding it or not. It would probably happen a ton with this glove. Oh man. I think Jeter thought he caught it. For those who don't really know what they're shopping for, if you bought a glove like this, they'll probably really like it because it's soft, which is a big thing that a lot of people like. So it's comfortable. Plus it's got this really big pocket, which is another thing that people like. But in reality, you don't necessarily need that really deep pocket. You need something that just functions properly. I don't like it that much if I'm being honest. Now that we're actually taking a few that are hit hard, it seems much more noticeable to spot the weird parts of the glove, like how ridiculously deep it is. That was one. Couldn't tell that the ball was in my glove at all. The glove is not optimized for shortstop or just infield in general. In the past like 50 years, baseball gloves have changed a ton, but also just the way that we treat our gloves has also changed a lot. Back when Jeter played, it was a little bit more normal to just throw your glove in your bag and just that's it, who cares? Nowadays, guys have literal carriers for their glove or they just simply carry it in their hand. I bet all of us as little leaguers at one point did this motion right here where you're bending the glove in and you're ready to field the ground ball. Derek Jeter did the same thing throughout his whole career it seems. What ends up happening is you get these weird creases in your glove and 
And the worst part about it is as you're coming in to feel the ground ball, because you're doing this, you're curling the fingers up and in. It increases that chance of a ball coming in like this, bouncing down. Did that hit like the very fingertips? You have to really curl that wrist to make it so your fingers are flat toward the ground. Curling your fingers isn't all that bad. You don't want to do it to any extreme though. But when it comes to your thumb and pinky, it's just flat out, don't curl them. You want to be welcoming to any ground balls coming your way. So basically either have your thumb and pinky straight or even flared just slightly. Trying to follow in the footsteps of Derek Jeter. Bending that glove in. <laughs> It feels nice to catch anything, just like with one hand. It just feels so soft when it hits your pocket. It just sinks into the glove. Like I said, that feels like comfortable, but it's not like actually good for fielding. The reality is Derek Jeter's glove is not a very good one for shorts. I'm just simply not a fan of this glove. If you did like this video, you'll enjoy the Vlad Jr. video. We did the same thing on his old third basement from Wilson. Nope, not getting in front of that. I was just afraid the Jennies.